and welcome to Nurses and Hypochondriacs, Monica Painter. Hello, hello. Super honored to be here. Cool. So Monica, I love your TikTok videos. Super fun. Thank you. And I love the most thing I love about your TikTok videos is your personality. You're just so happy and you have so much light, you know, going on because there's some people that are very angry. <laughs> there's a lot of people that are very angry. They there's come a lot of people. I trigger I could, the hell out of them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I got triggered by this one woman and I talked about it on my last episode with my friend Masaki, but she was telling women to dumb themselves down when they're dating a man and not talk about uh, what they do for a living. Don't talk about how many homes you own or the cars you own. So you're, I guess you're supposed to just be oh. destitute and oh. listen to the man talk about all his stuff, you know? And no, I you. just was like, so I, I was like, what are you talking about? Da, 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 da. And I was like, so um, she said that her husband gives her a um, trust fund to pursue her projects. Well, isn't that great? You know, <laughs> nice. so I, that's, that's amazing mm -hmm. for her. And so I told her, oh, so then you're a prostitute. And that just kind of came out and it really oh. triggered her. Oh. Prostitute, here's the thing about prostitute. I, and I go, oh, wait a minute. Cause then I was like with my friend and I talked about this on the other show. I go, that name is too good for her because prostitutes are working women. It's one of the oldest professions <laughs> right? in the world. I mean, prostitutes were known as temple goddesses that did sacred sex back in the day, you know, so that 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 title is way too good for her, you know, because she's teaching women to take advantage of men. That's that's right. in essence what she's doing. And she called me a feminist. I was like, what? <laughs> if anybody knows me and if you look at this podcast even uh i'm pro people okay so <laughs> like, <laughs> pro everybody so um yeah it was very weird so she was making tiktok videos about me then oh. bashing me yeah she's oh. like this nurse you know and i was like why don't you take it see when someone bashes you what i liked about it is you took it in stride and you made it a positive thing you know so with her she just kept like she goes, this nurse is a bully. And I was like, but you're bullying me back, you know, but I didn't say I didn't, I didn't continue. I just like blocked her. And I was like, well, yeah. this is like good content for comedy, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Because well, so it, it was one of crazy. the greatest lessons I've learned is to not uh -huh. give a shit. <laughs> right. Right. Like you just can't, you just can't care about all of that. Right. No. And really when I first started on TikTok, which was December 20th, which is crazy. I'm up to like 130,000 followers. My I know God. you're awesome. So you just started in December. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Yeah. December 20th was my first day. Like the first day that I put out a TikTok was December freaking 20th. That's awesome. Yeah. Amazing. You've a lot. Yeah. You're, you've grown. Like I started in, um, I think October, I started making videos, but it's been kind of, I, I haven't been consistent you know? Yeah. See, that was the key. So I researched the algorithm yes, before I started. Right. Like I knew once I got the ball rolling that I was going to roll. I was doing like yeah. five TikToks. I would post five a day for yeah. like the first seven days. And then that got the momentum going. And, yeah, and that's what you have to do. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's but so hard. it's interesting when you have that massive expansion, right? That quick boom of people coming in and I've got one video that's had like one and a half million views. Okay. So my point is you can imagine the range of comments because yeah. clearly I went outside of spiritual TikTok with that one, right? I went outside of like my soul tribe. So there are some really, um, there are some people who think I'm cuckoo bonkers crazy, which I'm totally cool with because I am. And I will totally own yeah, it. Me claim too. It. Hey, I let me it. tell you. It's all about being crazy these days. The crazy people are the normal ones, you know? Like <laughs> Exactly. You got to break out, break out of the matrix, right? You have and to. so it was a really beautiful growth experience for me when I had that burst of, you know, newcomers come in and, and I would scroll through the comments. And I really got to a point where if I saw it would start negative, I would just keep going. Like I wouldn't even yeah. read it because I would feel myself yes, drop yes, in. It, Yes, yep, yes. To my sympathetic nervous system. I love right. That. And so my heart would start racing. My palms would get sweaty. Yes. And you wow. know, this happened when I first started because I, I really wasn't ready to filter it. And I was like, okay. And I was like, okay, Monica, like 
listen to your body. I love that. Recenter, use this to realize that, you know, you're calling in people who are pulling out of you the bullshit that still remains in your field. I love and that. So, right. So you use it as a growth journey. So like all of the, I was, it, it got really interesting. I was doing a lot of work around ma- um, disempowered masculine energies I love and that. I was moving them out of my field. And so, you know, what started popping up in my comments, a whole bunch of young men, disempowered young men who, mm-hmm. you know, probably late twenties, mid thirties who were dogging me. And I was like, okay, yeah. yeah, I was like, all right, I get it. Let it flow. Just I let it flow that. and stop reading those comments and realize that the power is within you yes. and that that shit's just leaving your field. And I was like, okay, thank you. So instead of getting bitter and replying and getting pissed off at these young men, I realized they were serving me. Yes. Yes. So kind of like I was serving that woman. Like I was like, uh, maybe you should get the empowerment yourself. <laughs> you know? um, but then right. she did, but it, but it also works as a, as an opposite too. Cause I had to look at it. Like you're saying what was going on in me? Like, why am I getting so Always. triggered? You know, yeah. and I look at that, you know, and I go, do I believe anything she's saying? I was like, no, you know? And, and I was like, why am I getting? And so I just let it fly and I laughed. And then I, I told a couple of my friends. And so I was like, Oh, it sounds like a great stand up routine, you know? Cause then I started to talk about the prostitutes. The funny thing is I'm talking about it on my show. All of a sudden I'm listening to this other YouTube show um, that they just recorded that day. And they're talking about temple prostitutes. I was like, okay, it must be in the city. Yeah. Yeah must be in the collective. So tell us about yourself, Monica. I mean, you were a nurse. So tell us what all happened. <clears throat> okay. So, um, about, oh, let's see. I was 33. I was 33 before I became a nurse. So I'm a, I'm a baby nurse. I, I didn't even make it 10 years in the field of nursing. Okay. So when I was 33, I had, um, I had one child. I was pregnant with my second. Wow. I, d- I decided I got accepted in nursing school the day after I had my second child inside of nursing school, I had my third child. So through that time of getting my second degree, um, once I graduated, I went into bone marrow transplant, super heavy, heavy field of nursing. I made it about five years in that field. And then I was drinking way too much wine. I was, I was like (laughs) depressed from it. I was like, I've got to get the hell out of here. So I went to a physical rehab hospital working with lots of, um, stroke patients. I was on a neuro floor for a while um, working. Tough. Yeah. Like cardiac I mean, yeah. um, amputation, motor vehicle accident. Like it was a huge range of patients wow. um, doing physical rehab. There was no morgue in the building, which I found a hospital without a morgue intentionally because I had gone to the morgue way too many times as a bone marrow wow. transplant nurse. Yeah. Um, and so I really made it in that field. A couple of years, I was a single mom um, not in nursing school, but once I got out of nursing school, I'd been a nurse for a couple of years, became a single mom, was super, super grateful to have nursing to fall back on as a career to make a decent income in order to take care of my children on a single income. Um, I'm at this rehab hospital and we actually turned one of our floors into an overflow for COVID. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, as I was navigating this first wave of COVID, I've got the kids at home. Um, they, you know, ended up schooling at home because the schools were shut down. They were all right. doing everything online. I was working two days a week in the hospital. So it worked out really well. I didn't have to seek a whole lot of childcare, but you know, the environment was just so sketchy. I, I was like, I've got to find something yeah. different because I cannot sustain this emotional like trauma that I was exposed to every day as a nurse going to the hospital. You know, the requirements were always being changed or the protocol was always being changed based on what was available. So I absolutely didn't feel safe. And then comes the vax. Right. And I made it until they started pushing the vax. And what happened for me is I went into work one morning. My manager was there. He's never there that early. And I walked in two minutes late. Now I wasn't late getting onto the floor for patient care. I was late going into the morning meeting, two minutes. Mm -hmm. 
best employee in the building, very rarely late, always bring in the light and the love. I walk in and he singled me out in front of everyone. Oh no. Yeah. That's um, wrong. Was very, very disrespectful. And I, my intuition said, this is about the vax. I was one of the few people who took a religious exemption. I know that they were giving bonuses based on percentage of work population that could what? be vax. Are you yeah. kidding me? Wow. No. Okay. So um, as he verbally abused me in front of all of my peers, my heart started racing, fucking sympathetic nervous yeah. system kicked mm-hmm. in. And I was like, oh, you, you got to breathe. You've got to breathe and stay in your logical mind here. Don't do anything crazy. Well, we ended up having an exchange that didn't get blown too out of proportion, but I almost went and got report from the on, from the um, night shift. And my intuition said, don't get report because he could get you for patient abandonment. And can you really make it through a 13 hour shift after he just verbally abused you in front of everyone? I was a mess. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, Can you put the shield on? Can you put the N95 on for a 13 hour shift after that? Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, you will have my letter of resignation by the end of the day. And his response was, I look forward to it. (gasps) Whoa. (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I took my badge off and I threw it at him and I honestly told him to fuck off oh my god good for you and I walked out the door and I got in my car he escorted me he was worried I was going to do something I don't know Uh, he escorted me all part of the the mind game right right. and I went and got in my car and bald I was like shit what am I gonna do I'm a single mom like yeah I had already started an online business but I was still growing it, you know, yeah. like I was being that responsible caregiver right, right. and like building the business before I jumped ship. Right. Right. And so talk about lighting a fire under me. Um, I, I went into the grind, but I did it from a place of alignment. Like I got really mm-hmm. centered and I was like, okay, this is my soul calling. That manager was my path of least resistance. Yes getting out of my comfort zone and building something, yes. building a legacy for my family. That's awesome. And so I had already began like my spiritual journey not long after I got, or not long before I got divorced. And so I was like in a good place, like really deep belief in my ability, knowing full well that I create my own reality. And I then that's it. when I just really integrated my spiritual journey and my alignment and my true deep belief in myself and my ability as an amazing divine feminine goddess to create a presence online. And that was, I, I quit almost a year ago. It's been almost, almost a year. Yeah. Thank you. And so, yeah. And so now I'm like really bringing the light on social media. Like that's my goal to touch as many lives as possible. 99% of what I do is free, but I also don't equate spiritual with broke anymore. So I've been able to incorporate, um, meditation. I create meditations. I'm an affiliate marketer for a beautiful product called Kangen water. Yeah. Um, I saw that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so now I'm just kind of building, like building my offerings. What else I'd like to create a course. So I'm just listening to my soul and being led on like, what can I offer to the world and how can I use my gifts to take care of my family? Exactly. But I think, you know, nowadays the nursing world really needs this. It's just like, I was talking to a student nurse practitioner yesterday that came to shadow me and she was telling me, like she works at a hospital that I used to work at and she works in Hemonk in Peds. And she was telling me so many nurses are, are jumping ship they're ready to go. They're leaving. And I go, why? And they're like, cause of the COVID and cause of the morale, cause of uh, the managers and the administrative staff and how they've been treating them all through this. And I was like, and she said, it's a lot of nurses. Yeah. Yeah. They're done. And it's like, my whole thing is I get it. It's crappy, but you can change it. You can change it within the system. It's hard, Mm -hmm. but sometimes those systems have to fall too you know, right. or you can go ahead and go back and rebuild. So, I mean, this has been going on in healthcare for a long time. Right. COVID was just that, you know, it's that, that last Jenga mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. block that you take on and then it, it all falls down, 
you know, um, but I've had my similar experiences too. And I, I had a boss who fired me and that was it for me in like 2016. And I was like, okay, I'm starting my own thing. You know, I'm done, you know, and it was amazing. It's been amazing, you know, cause I really got to work on myself. I had the time and, um, yeah. And here I am today. So something you touched upon, which I, uh, I also teach in my writing classes is that we, uh, create our own reality. And when I teach that to people that are new to the concept, they're like, what, you know, I go, yeah, it's like a script. We write our own script and, and, um, you know, and we go through it and stuff. And I go, and you can change that. And it's all in the subconscious mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and how we train that. So can you touch upon that and maybe give us some experiences on how you've changed stuff? Because I know I saw one TikTok video where, where you were like, I lived here and now I live here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah. And that's really where it all began for me. I remember when I was first led to, um, it was Wayne Dyer. Okay, yeah. so Wayne Dyer, mm -hmm. I had someone that I was in a business with. It was actually a, a MLM. I was in a like a you know multi-level oh, yeah, marketing multi with someone marketing. that's that's long mm -hmm. in the past, but he was like, you know, like he knew I was struggling in my marriage and just in life in general. And he was like, Do you know Wayne Dyer? And I was like, uh -huh. I don't. So I started researching Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer led me to Abraham Hicks. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And this is yeah, where I was going like, down the rabbit holes. <laughs> right. And I was like, what? I'm in control. Like, and at first it can't, it's like daunting, right? Like shit, I created all of this, mm -hmm. but then you get introspective and you start observing your thoughts and you're like, yeah, I totally created this. I'm not surprised. Right. So then Abraham Hicks, um, you know, on my YouTube feed led me to Joe Dispenza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is what I love about, uh, the way I approach metaphysics with nurses yeah. and people in the medical field who have a very scientific, logical way of thinking is I love to like bridge the gap between Abraham Hicks and Joe Dispenza. That's like my thing. That's my sweet spot. Right. Right. Okay. And so I didn't really need, like, I, I believed once I started observing the world around me and my thoughts, I totally was hook, line and sinker in on what, um, Abraham Hicks was saying, but then I was like, okay, what can I do to even enhance my belief more? Right. And that's when I started looking at quantum physics and the way that yes. Joe Dispenza would explain these metaphysical principles, but do them in a scientific way right. to help my mind. Cause we're not really meant to fully understand it in the mind. This is just a human brain, right? Right. Like it's really in the heart. It's a feeling, it's a knowing. And that's what we came to learn. We came to learn that we are not a physical body that we are. This is just a skin suit we're walking around in, right? Exactly. <clears throat> and so, our, yeah. yeah, this is kind of like our avatar body in a way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And so once I started looking at like, um, the, the field of energy that surrounds our body and the quantum field of infinite possibilities and like how energetically, when we actually really drop into our heart mm -hmm. and, and magnetize ourselves to that, which we desire, that's when this like super woo woo principle of the law of attraction really started to make sense to me. You know, that we live in a world of electrons. Yes. And when we can really activate our heart and connect these two, we've got our electronic system up here that thinks and is really meant to execute the mind or execute the desires of the heart not to, to fuck that up for us, which is what right. a lot of people allow it to do. We think of what we want. We send that out into the quantum field. And then we really drop into our heart and be, be in the stillness and the knowing that we truly are everything, magnetize ourselves, literally magnetize ourselves and call back in that which we desire that we have yes. thought of. Right, right, right. Totally. And so, and, and still people are like, you know, can be like, well, that's a bunch of crap, but that's only because they're not open 
to really learning these principles because these are scientific principles. There are lots of research studies around these principles, a lot of energetic studies that are being proven that can be proven with EEGs and EKGs. And if you'll just allow yourself some space, you know, and like an openness yeah, to dive in, it really makes total sense because the universe is mathematical. Like it, it right. is all a giant equation. Right. It's the matrix. I mean, if you watch the matrix movie with yeah. all the numbers <laughs> coming <laughs> out yeah. and also it's great that you brought that up. I don't know if you know about Florence Nightingale and at the age of 16, she was a, a mystic, right? So she, Florence Nightingale was a mystic. So at the age of 16, she went to Egypt and she was on the, one of the canals there. It doesn't come to me right now. <laughs> Too early in the morning for my brain to be working um, like that. <clears throat> So the Nile. So she was on the Nile, the River Nile. Okay, uh, on some. I didn't boat know ride. this. I'm getting chills. I did not know this. I'm gonna send you the article, and so okay. she starts getting these downloads. Okay, and um, she starts seeing these synchronicities and these serendipities. She starts seeing these numbers. Okay, um, and, and so uh, she was able to tap in. So when she went to Crimea, you know, and she was able to figure out, like she was able to see things that people weren't able to see. And you probably have that as well. I have that too. I've had that for many years where I could see things and I would tell people and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know? And I was like, why can't they see what I see? And it was always so frustrating. Even about people, I'd be like, that person's shady. Oh no, he's such a nice person. I don't know what you're talking about. Then years later, they're like, oh my God, how did you know that? And I was like, I saw it, you know? And and um, so anyway, f- f- going back to Flo, she was an amazing statistician because she would see Fibonacci codes. Oh, yeah. And so she's all about the pie graphs, you know, and that's mm-hmm. how she was able to put things together. And but she would see these numbers coming down, you know, and she would see the sequences, the Fibonacci sequences and and just, um, you know, the the ring. It's not really a ring, but the squirrels you know, um, Mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, if I can, I'll send into trance sometimes and I'll be drawing swirls and I get woo massive downloads. I mean, you can, yeah, you can tap into that other side. So what it is, it's the LDS, the, um, there's a guy that I've been listening to Tom Campbell. Uh, he wrote a book, my big toe. And so he talks about the Monroe Institute. He talks a lot about telepathy. He talks about the LDS, which stands for the, you know, I forget right now, but that other, the other side, how we're Mm -hmm. able to tap into it, kind of like the matrix. And that's where we can go ahead and get information, creative information, um, anything, but you really have to work on yourself to get there, you know? And I'm able to tap into that. It's pretty, pretty wild. So I haven't That's read, amazing. I haven't read Tom's book. I'm gonna get it. <clears throat> so, but I highly suggest looking at his work because he does talk a lot about quantum physics. He is a scientist and um, he spent a lot of time doing these experiments on telepathy, which is wild. And I <clears throat> I was sharing my uh, stories on telepathy with you before this and telepathy is very, very real. Um, I have a a few of my TikToks about it where uh, one day um, I kind of was in this very interesting space and I was in uh, one of my clinics and I had seen this little boy before and he was four, I think he was about two or three. Um, and I'd seen him multiple times for ear infections and here he was again with like all his siblings and his sister uh, was coming in for a physical assessment and he sees me and he has this big smile and he's like, I know you. And I was like, I know you too, you know, and, (laughs) but I forgot his name. Right. And so I was listening to his sister's heart and I was looking at him and he's smiling at me and I'm smiling at him. And I was like thinking in my head, what the hell is this kid's name again? What's his name? His sister goes like this. His name is Frankie. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> she read my thoughts. 
you know? And I'm like, oh, wow, this stuff is real. You know, it's like, it almost makes you think of the the six feet apart. Like, why do we have to sit six feet apart? Are we now able to uh, read people's, each other's minds? Yes, we are. You know, has it ever happened to you where I know I was dating this guy one time and I was sitting across from him and I was like, I got to, I got to really break up with him, you know? And I was thinking that in my head and I didn't know how to do it. And all of a sudden he goes, are you going to break up with me? And I was like, (gasps) wow. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. (laughs) So I really am. um, I think it's like clairsentient where I think Uh that's what what feeling. Yeah. But I get, I really get the feeling like when when I do um, energy work, when I do quantum healing, uh-huh. um, I energies come to me and I feel them. Uh, it's right. usually up here. Like I know who comes to me when they come because they come and touch a certain, or I feel the energy in a certain space on my head. So I got a lot going yeah. on up here, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is really interesting. Um, and I see, a, I get a lot of downloads in meditation, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> a lot of downloads in meditation. Yeah. So so let's talk about the brain gasm. I love that TikTok one that <clears throat> you uh, were talking about and the pineal gland and the whole external electromagnetic field. Okay. Okay. So this is the, so this is the video that has like one and a half million views <laughs> and awesome. totally, you know, I was totally learned people in with the term brain gasm, right? Yeah. Um, so this is a term that Joe Dispenza introduced me to. I thought was super intriguing. And I was like, you know, um, people need to know about the pineal gland yeah. and you know, there's a lot of like mystery behind it. And I was really interested to see that there's a lot of fear around it too, which is interesting. Hmm. Um, and you know, again, you create your own reality. Like if you're fearful about something, I advise people to absolutely not go there because you're not ready for it. Right. And fear just calls in fearful experiences. I've never had any fear around activating my pineal gland, like ever. Like I never even thought that it would be something fearful that people would think of. But, um, so what happens is, and I, cause I meditate a lot. And so I was really looking for, like, I was like, I want my meditations to be more powerful. Like, how can my meditations be more powerful? And so this is when Joe Dispenza introduced about driving the spinal fluid, up yeah. into the, the brain kundalini. to yeah, yeah the ku- it, kundalina exactly mm-hmm. kundalini exactly and so you know he takes the woo woo terms out of it and so like he refers mm-hmm. to um, the chakras as energy centers yeah. and it's all very scientific and so which gave me a good visual since I know the physiology of the body as as mm-hmm. a nurse and so um, really most people don't experience this DMT release which is natural in your brain I'll explain a little bit more about that this, um, brain gasm, like the first time they do it, like this takes work. This is a, this is a yeah. practice that you really have practice. to develop. Yeah. It's you got to build your stamina up in order to do it. And so, um, what happens is as you do these, these breathing practices, Wim Hof has some breathing techniques. It just is a simple YouTube search, you know, search, um, activate the pineal gland through breathing and mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff will come up. You can pull out what resonates with you. But essentially what we're doing is we are driving the spinal fluid up our spine into our brain to really put pressure on our pineal gland. And when you put pressure on your pineal gland, the main thing that the pineal gland does is produce melatonin, Mm -hmm. right? And, but melatonin is so much more. Someone made a comment on my post and was like, all it does is produce melatonin. And I'm like, all it does, no. like melatonin yeah. is huge and it and does so much is more. Is huge, and obviously. Melatonin is everything, okay? Yeah. And so like, what is melatonin? Well, melatonin is that neurochemical in your brain that is produced at night, right? When right. you go to sleep. So this is why we meditate with our eyes closed because we want to activate melatonin without getting too deep into like what all melatonin does. Melatonin is a very positive chemical for your body. It allows you to go into a space where your inner world becomes more real than your outer world or or your awareness. The fact that your inner world is more than your outer world becomes very, very evident to you. And you get to have this like mystical, magical experience because melatonin continues to convert into a stronger, stronger, stronger substance, more mind blowing substance in your brain as you are intentionally putting the pressure on your pineal gland. 
And so what happens is you end up producing DMT is what it's called. And DMT is like a natural um, hallucinogenic. It's the most powerful hallucinogenic on the earth. And you can naturally produce this in your brain. And when you do that, it puts you into a euphoric state yeah. and it just boom, your whole body is like lit up. And this is a brain gasm. Your whole entire body is just lit up with happy centering magical chemicals. And you can go anywhere you want. You can see anything you want. And for me, it's a lot of colors. I see lots of patterns. Yeah. My eyes are closed. Uh, I see patterns too. and beautiful, like sacred geometry yep. in my field of vision when this happens for me. And it's like the ultimate place to focus. Right. It's like, there's nothing going on outside of you. You're right there and you're just watching. You're just observing and feeling the movement of this energy. And, and this is like this deep happiness that we're constantly seeking from the world outside of us, but we will never get there. Yeah. Nothing outside of us will ever help us to achieve that happiness. So for me, a brain gasm is an ultimate euphoric feeling that really helps me to tap into my ability to create happiness inside of me. And when you create happiness in here, everything in everything, your outside world it, it reflects changes. it back to you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I have done that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty amazing and, it, and it's awesome. And then also, I don't know if it's happened to you where these interesting people start gravitating to you. Yeah. And they, they tell you these wild store. It, it, this happens. Like, look at me. us. Yeah. This yeah. Is totally yeah. co-creation yeah. calling each other in. Yeah. We're <clears> like, <throat> I'm like, here, come on. You're like, yes, boom. And it just happens. And it's awesome. And I was like, yes, I love it when this happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's awesome. And it, and it's so, and we have the power to do that. It's like, people will tell you, no, you don't have that power because they're dumbing you down and they're creating that fear. So something I want you to go back and talk about fear and the pineal gland like what were I mean what are your experiences with that with these other people like why are they afraid of it are they afraid of their own internal power you know because some people will go and get take LSD do ayahuasca journeys or um, they'll go ahead and do mushrooms to get these experiences and I've been invited oh let's do mushrooms oh I go I can't I can already get there you yeah. know without doing those, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, you know, I don't want to go to the other side and not come back because there are people that get stuck on the yeah. other side. I've seen <clears> them. <throat> so when they're on this side, they're kind of like robots, you know, yep. did you watch that, that Disney movie soul? Have you seen it? I did. I did. It's okay. been a while though. And I remember right. it was it came out like last year. It I was powerful. 20. Yes. So soul explains that, you know, there's this guy on his computer and he's kind of like robotic. And on the other side, he's kind of like a monster. There's like this monster or something. And he's, he's got no soul in the real world. And there is these, um, the guy on the boat and he's like, uh Oh, there's another one of those. I gotta go save them you know? And so he kind of switches them back to where, and then you see the guy on his computer, like, Whoa, you know, he kind of gets this bolt and this jolt. Um, so go ahead and talk about that fear a little bit. Okay. Like, yeah, absolutely. It is really interesting. Um, will you watch the time for me? I'm sorry. Sure, I can't. Sure. Okay. Um, so I have until one Eastern. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sorry. Okay, good. Um, okay, so so what I am feeling, first of all, you know, we create our own reality. Like you get, if, if you're afraid, you get to be afraid. I honor that. Um, but what I'm, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling with these comments is it's someone has told them something, right? Well, just like someone has told me, and actually I'll be specific. I have a 15 year old daughter who, um, I guess it was about two years ago, really introduced me to guides and goddesses. And I had, I had fears from religion around like blasphemy mm -hmm. and, you know, that I couldn't imagine like working with guides, but my daughter was like, mom, you, you only, if you fear something, you create you actually call in a fear experience. True. 
And so I'm not afraid of this. If you're afraid of this, then you're not ready for it. Right. But I can tell you that there's nothing to be afraid of. And she started talking to me about like duality. I'm like, dude, how old are you? Right. I'm like <laughs> you're 13. She, she's Talk. like this. She's like this enlightened being coming through yes. her to teach you. Exactly. Yeah, wild. And so, yeah. so that's, that is where things shifted for me. I was like, you're right. And, and something else she said to me is she was like, mom, um, you know, the guidance is inside of you. Yes. When you're seeking, when you're talking to a guide, it really is a manifestation of what you're creating, what your soul is creating that resonates with you, that there's nothing really going on outside of you. It's all in here. True. Right. And so she told me that it totally shifted my feelings about my power and about what, love it, what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm seeing these comments about fear and that, oh my God, don't go there. You activate the third eye. It's dangerous. These are, this is an energy that these people are creating inside of themselves that has been been taught to them, right? Whether it's subconscious or conscious, right? Whether it's overtly being taught to them or subliminal, subliminally being taught to them. um, It is a fear that they've created. And always my response to those comments are, if you're afraid of it, don't do it. Exactly. If you're afraid of it. Don't do it. Boom. That's it. Like you do you, you do what resonates with you. Mm-hmm. And if you're afraid of it, then you're not ready for it. And you're right. You're, you, you have a valid fear around it because you're literally creating fear with your thoughts of fear around it. So don't touch it. Do something else. Very true. Very yeah. true. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Before we wrap up, I kind of want to do a question with you. Okay. Something that I had seen on Facebook. Uh, Let's do a case study and I want to see what your comments are. Um, I I was like trying to find it because I left my phone in the other room, but let me remember. Okay. So this is the story. It was a male travel nurse, right? And he was on a Facebook site and he was telling the story of how he's like, you know, you shouldn't flaunt what you got because this is what happened to me. He went and bought a convertible BMW. So he had told this male doctor about him buying this BMW. He had just signed this new contract with this hospital, right? Well, the doctor made a comment to him about his BMW and about the contract, right? Well, he gets called in after that to renegotiate the contract and they offer him less money, right? All of a sudden. So he wrote on there, he's like, see, don't flaunt your stuff. You should, you know, I learned my lesson. I'm not going to talk about this stuff. So I wrote on there, like, I want to, I want to hear what you have to say about it first. And then I'll tell you what I wrote. Go ahead. Okay. So, wow. That is like a a loaded case study for sure. Yeah, It brings up a lot for me because what I've learned about money Mm -hmm. is that money is an energy, right? Money is an energy. Um, I've read the book, the, the, I think it's called the big leap, the big leap. Oh, I haven't read that one. The big leap. I can't remember the author's name, but it's called the big leap. And something that he talks about in the big leap is that we have an internal thermostat. Mm Mm-hmm. And this internal thermostat is something that we have subconsciously created throughout our life based on the programs, the stories that we've been told that we have, like, you know, you sit your, you set it on 67 or whatever, like that's where we are. And that's where we're comfortable in life. When we step out of our comfort, comfort zone, when something bigger than we're used to in particular money comes into our field where we are trying to turn that thermostat up and the thermostat's going, no, I'm set. I'm auto set to 67. You ain't going no higher. Yeah. And so your body, your, your nervous system responds and kind of freaks out and the world around you responds in that way too. Yes. Right. And so we call this an upper limit. And so for me, what I'm hearing is that his field His energetic field was not ready to hold that large amount of money. And so he, yeah, so he manifested circumstances in the world around him in order to bring him back down to his, what his internal thermostat was comfortable with. Very good. Yeah. yeah, And so like, how do we deal with that? There's a lot of ways we can deal with that. Right. Um, For me, 
the best way for my nervous system to keep up with my quantum leaping in life is EFT tapping. Yes. And we talked about that uh, with Michael Grady on this show. He's a hypnotist, a stage hypnotist, and he's all into tapping. Yeah. I love Very tapping. Mm-hmm. And there's a huge, it's science. There is science. It works with the meridians of the body. It works with, with acupuncture points. It helps your brain talk to bo- you know, both sides synchronize. And what happens is we store, we store everything in our body, right? Everything, every experience we've ever had. If we did not experience the proper amount of empathy and recognition for what we were moving through at that time. So in particular, as children, we stored in our body. Mm-hmm. And so this is why our nervous system is like, e, even though you're fucking miserable, you're going to stay right here because this is what we're used to. And like, we're safe. We're not getting chased by a lion. We have food, water, and shelter. Just stay here. Right. We don't need to grow. Let's just stay here. And so when you tap, you're, you're running through some negative BS that's stored in your body and it literally can leave your body and leave your field so that you can make room for the good stuff. Exactly. Huge. Yeah. I love, I'm addicted to meditation. I'm addicted to tapping. It's my two favorite tools in this world. Awesome. I love that answer. And yes, my response was very similar to that. Exactly. Like he got triggered and he created it. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Like he wasn't and, worthy of that. And, good and, contract. and so his post reinforces, him. it yeah. just reinforces. So he's going to stay there until he right. brings awareness around the fact that that shit needs to be adjusted. Like right. it is adjustable. It doesn't have to stay there. So it's really interesting how we reinforce these stories that we tell ourselves. Yes. Yes. Well, I have totally loved this discussion, Monica, where can people find you? Um, okay. So I'm mainly on TikTok now, which is always manifesting magic. One word, always manifesting magic. Um, and really access to all of my links, my website and everything is on TikTok. There's a clickable link and I do quantum healing. So I charge $55 for 45 minute session for quantum healing. Absolutely magical. It is my gift to the world. I'm very, very tuned in and very good at it. Um, YouTube. I am, um, again, if you go to my TikTok, you can just click on my YouTube link. Um, I'm like, what is my, what is my YouTube even called? Meditation, tarot, and quantum magic. I love it. I create meditations. They're always channeled. So freaking awesome. Um, and I'm on Facebook too, but I'm mostly on TikTok. So cool. And I will have links to, uh, to all your information on the show notes. Okay. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> edits, edits. Thank you so much, Monica. This has been super fun. All right. Okay. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Let's do it again. Yes, I love you. definitely. I awesome. Definitely. Awesome. I think you're awesome as well. Cool. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Have a great day.